Alrighty then. Not going to go through, you know, my usual introduction because I really don't expect this video to last that long. This it's sort of like a, a rant video. I'm very, very angry and I'm very upset. And it should only take a few minutes to get get all this out of my system. <laughs> it's not really something to laugh at. <clears throat> there was a case, I believe it was in France a few years ago, maybe uh, I would guess six years ago. Before I did this video, perhaps I should have I should have looked that case up so I could more accurately tell you about it. I believe it was like six, five or six years ago. Many of us never even heard about it. But it was in France. And I believe it was the first time in legal or judicial history that somebody tried to sue the church. This person took their church to court and sued them for fraud. I don't know what happened. I I would I think they it went to trial or whatever, but 
the end result did not affect, of course, the church and you know religion or whatever. But it was the first time that somebody used the legal system and make those who make these claims about God and, and, and the Holy Ghost and the spirits and all this stuff make them go to court and prove that what they're talking about has some type of credibility or it's just a lie made up to either control me or get my money. I need to look up and find out what happened in that case. I, 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 don't, I don't really remember. I, I do remember that was happening. I don't know exactly what the end result or the conclusion of the case was, was the verdict. I don't even really know if the church was, was put on trial. I don't even think that it made it that far. But for this video, for the purpose of this video, and I want to say this, and I want to make clear to all of you, because many of you believe in God, you believe in Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, you believe in the prophets and Moses and Jesus and, and whomever. Y'all believe all this stuff. But you did not create it. You did not make it up. Somebody, not God, not Jesus, not Moses, none of these people came to you and sold you anything. Most of us it was forced on us at birth. So you had, I know I didn't, I had no choice but to accept my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I did not know when I was a little boy, I did not know nothing about Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, Bilal or whoever. I only knew about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and this bad guy called the devil. This was taught to me almost at birth. And they took me to a river and dumped my head in a real lake and I was baptized and I went through all of that. This was forced on me. I had no choice. I was never told that this was a belief. It was taught to me as though God was real. Jesus is real. Moses was real. Nobody told me that there was a possibility that this might not be true. And I have the right to know that. This was forced on us. The, the Jesus character was forced on dark-skinned people by racists, and then our parents forced Jesus on us. It's all about forcing stuff on people. But you, but God gives us free will. How can you have free will when your mind was stolen even before you was born? They were ready to indoctrinate you with this even before you could walk good. Now, so with that said, I want to say this and be as respectful as possible because it's nothing against you personally. But these belief systems, these doctrines, these things. I guess there's no other way to say it. But see, y'all liars. you liars. There was no Jesus. There was no Prophet Muhammad. There was no God that's going to do this and, and the floods and 
all the stuff that y'all talk about. Do you know what fraud is? Fraud is deception. And there's a reward to you when you deceive. Like money. When you make a claim on an automobile and this automobile on an automobile does this and it does that and you accept money and this automobile does not live up to the claim, then you sold that person a lemon. Because the automobile does not do what the customer expected the automobile to do, which is simply take me to point A to point B. But this car has all kinds of problems and you knew it. Most times they know. Sometimes you don't, but most times they know something was wrong with that car. They're trying to pawn it off on somebody. But y'all believers in God, I'm telling you, with good intent, whether you know it or not, you are a liar. And that's just the bottom line. And we should have a court. And we should be allowed to take you to court. When you told me that God is supposed to do this and God's supposed to do that for me. And when I find out that this God didn't and can't, you lied to me. And then you want me to give your God charity. And I put my five and ten dollars. And I give in charity for this God. And it's all a lie. The only one I see getting rich is the preacher. I just heard a Muslim preacher talk about they take care of me. Talk about his followers. I'm a free man. They, they take care of me. But what about your followers? I can guarantee you some of them are drawing disability and using an EBT card, but He's a free man because he's selling the people that believe in these gods, these dreams, this car. And when you get in that car, you'll find out that it's a lemon. You've been calling on God for thousands of years. This God and this Jesus and this Muhammad, all this stuff has yet to come and do anything for anybody. And I don't have to argue and debate with you. I want to take you to court. I want to take you to court and sue you for deception and fraud. And you will lose. And the church, regardless of your religion, these preachers and these pastors, they will lose by the billions and trillions of dollars. Because none of these pastors and preachers you can talk all pretty and you can smile in people's face. But when you go to court, it's a whole different ball game. Because in court, in the legal system, it's all about proof. It's all about evidence and you have none. You're a bunch of scam artists and liars. And you're taking the people for a ride. And you have been doing this for thousands of years. Making slaves. They take care of me. I'm a free man. I can do what I want. So if they were, so if they were not taking care of you, what would you be doing? How free would you be if you didn't have these slaves that believe in this lie you have told them, this deception? You need to get these preachers and these pastors and these ministers and all these fool folks. Take them to court for deception and fraud. Deception and fraud because you've taken my money from me. Through deception. Through lies. And that's the bottom line. Yes, I'm angry. Because the descendants of slaves born in America, the reason why you can't get your foot off the ground and the reason why you can't come up out of the grave is because you're locked in 
to this slave teaching. And you have been locked into that slave teaching for a long time. First, it was the it was the lies that was taught to us by our slave masters. Now it's the lies that's taught by the pro-black preachers and teachers and historians and whatever take you to court. I'll meet you in court. You're a liar. Deceivers. So you got all this God. You got all this black pride and all this stuff that y'all talking about. What do you have? You have nothing but a lemon. You do have a car. But your car don't work. Your car don't have proper wheels. Your car can only go 20 miles an hour. Your, 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 your car got it's, it's, it needs all kinds of repairs. Because somebody sold you a clunker. You don't know how to pick the right car. And when you pick any kind of religion, when you pick any kind of spirituality, you have already picked a lemon. You've already picked the wrong car. It's not your fault. Like I said, all of us come from that place. But see, nature is good to us because nature gave you and me a brain. And when you allow your brain to begin to think for yourself, let your brain analyze, and you don't even need to go to court. Let your brain be the judge. Feed this, re-examine all these things that we have been taught. And let your brain figure things out. And you will come to the same conclusion that I have. That is a dang shame that we allow ourselves to continue to be tricked and deceived all this time. The book has got to stop here. We need to take these pastors and preachers and all these people talking all this God holier than thou stuff. Take them to court and prove what they're talking about. I already know they can't prove nothing. Bunch of liars. And if you support that, you're a liar too. That's a shame. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about this rant. I'm your, I'm your soul brother number one and your snub number seven. This was and is the reality's temple on earth and forever love, peace, and soul. I'm Andre Devon, 69, student and minister of action for the reality's temple on earth. And I'm making this particular video about the reality simple and how it changed my views and um, some of my um, concepts about life. But first, I want to say that I want to thank uh, Angel Snub Number Seven for uh, being there for me, administering to me over YouTube and in person over the phone. Um, the brother believed in me to make these videos. He uh, he gave me the opportunity. He gave me the free will to make these videos that I make in association with the Reality Temple on Earth. Uh, I want to say that if I would have had a brother like this in my life 10, 15 years ago, I probably wouldn't have took the path that I took. But that was my experience. This good brother's a good role model for us. You know, he, he don't drink, he never smoked, he never used drugs, he's not a habitual criminal or any form of criminal. He know what it's like to be um, locked down in a prison for something he didn't do. Um, 
he know what suffering is all about. And that's what uh, drew my attention to him in his video. Alrighty then, the brother that you just uh, saw speak about me, this video, that video was taken uh, a few years ago. Uh, the brother went by the name Andre Deadman 69 and he became my assistant you know, not too long after he introduced himself. And many of you probably know who he was. And he did represent, or I did allow him to represent this ministry. I want to make clear that I allowed him to speak his own opinion under the umbrella of this ministry. He did not copy anything that I had to say or he was a follower of my teachings or anything like that. He was just a brother and had his opinion and whatever that opinion was, as long as it fit within the criteria or the foundation or the base of what this ministry is about, then I'll allow him to speak under this umbrella, but he was not a follower of myself. In fact, I'm not looking for followers. I'm looking for those who can think for themselves and follow their own heart, and we can work together as a team. I will follow you if your ideas are good and it's beneficial, and I hope that you would uh, it is, I don't like that word following. We help one another. But anyway, I have very short time and I would just like to say why I brought this brother into this subject matter. This young man, regardless to our relationship, he was and probably still is a very good brother. Things happen. And uh, I have no animosity or no hatred or anything towards him. I wish him the best in this life. Very good brother, very intelligent, especially coming from the place that he came from. And that's my subject. This young man was looking or watching listening to my videos for a certain period of time. And then one day, because I do put my uh, contact number in the public domain, he called me and we spoke. And he told me, he said that he knows that I'm not religious and spiritual and all like that, but he was a person who was doing drugs and alcohol and he had a problem, you know, uh, with abuse of women and things of this nature. He just told me these things. And he wanted to know what advice could he give me so he could become a better person. He's not seeking the Bible. He's not seeking the Quran. He's not seeking any religious answer. He's coming to a person that I make very clear I do not represent religion or spirituality or any of these things. And I told him just honestly, unlike some people, I told him honestly, I have never been a drug addict. I have never, you know, experienced the things that you tell me. I really don't know what to suggest to you. However, what I can say, perhaps if you take the energy that you have and put it somewhere else, maybe that would help you to rid yourself of the drugs and the alcohol and maybe even find yourself uh, interacting 
with your women friends, his his wife at the time, better. And I said, he asked me, well, how about if I assist you? Can I help you do what you're doing and spread this word that you're talking about? Who am I to deny this man uh, an opportunity to spread real truth? Because the truth, this is not mine. It belongs to him. It belongs to all those who seek to embrace it. Who am I? However, I am the gatekeeper. I am the authority of this ministry. And this ministry was founded and it has a base and we must stay within the confines of that base. So that brother began to help me. And the people who watch my videos, they were very happy to see this, this man, especially coming from his background. He had also been in prison. But from his background, having no help from a God. Now listen, see, this is my point. This man coming from prison, criminal activity, he calls himself a, 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 a criminal, abuser of women and uh, doing drugs and, and stealing and whatever he was doing. And all it took was somebody to have a little faith in him. And I put my trust in him that he would make good videos and use his intelligence. And it was always there in him. See, brothers and sisters, we need to stop relying on this outside spiritual God we never met. In fact, most of us say that we are children of God. And if that's true, then we need to start looking at the God in ourselves. So many people said, if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for Muhammad, now you have a perfect example of this young man and myself who were able to come from up out of some decadent place and now and we rise ourselves up or raise ourselves up from up out of the mud. Not looking outside of ourselves, looking and developing the God himself. I don't know what this brother is doing now, but I can tell you about myself. I don't believe in your God. In fact, I don't acknowledge your God. I can't comprehend what you're saying. I've never met, so I, I can't say I believe or disbelieve. I've never met your God. But I can tell you, through love of myself, the discipline and the power of myself, I'm just as righteous, just as moral. In fact, I would tell you, and I know that I'm more moral and more righteous than many of you. I have been called Mr. Perfect, Mr. Holier Than Thou. And don't even come and not, and not even express a religious <laughs> background or, or religious foundation because that's what it's all about this is what you are and in your scriptures it says that the kingdom of heaven is in you but you cannot get the kingdom of heaven to come from you because you're expecting it to come from a god or some divine prophet or whatever it's always in you be like the dorothy and the wizard of oz and click your heels together and take yourself home instead of always looking for a savior, looking for the wizard of Oz. Mm. That's why I wanted to, or brought this brother to your attention because of where he come from. And hopefully he is still developing and growing. And maybe perhaps one day we would join ranks again and really put another whooping on those who are seeking power outside of themselves when they should be looking deep inside of self. Start with yourself. Love yourself. 
If you come from God, then you're divine also. So why are you belittling yourself? Why are you putting your own divinity down and uplifting somebody else when y'all, when we all come from the same place and have the same father, what makes them so special? They're going to offer you divine guidance and you can't offer them nothing? That's my point. We can be good and we can be righteous with or without religion and spirituality. Just treat another person like you want to be treated and grow and develop. And like this man and myself, you can come up from out of anything using the power of yourself. Here. With that said, thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This is your brother, Angel Snub Number 7. Like always, until next time, love, peace, and so okay i made a video on this topic and because uh <laughs> google has terminated so many of my channels and when you do a um a search on Daily Motion and some of the other uh, websites, those searches don't do a good job of finding the material that you want. I know that it's there, but it's posted, but I don't know where it's at. So I did talk about this a few years back, and I don't know, for some reason tonight, I wanted to talk about it again because it needs to be spoken about and you need to understand it. You keep telling me about we need to study. Okay, that's nice when you study. Study what? For what purpose? Whatever you study, it still has to make sense. Whatever you study, it still must be rational. Whatever you study still must be logical. Whatever you study still must be able to reason within it. Whatever you study should fit within the realm of the only reality that we know. When you start talking about things that outside of this reality then it falls into the realm of fiction and fantasy and when you start talking spiritual that's exactly where most of you live that's where that's where you end up at and that's why you can't explain your spirituality because it's outside of what you can comprehend so you can't explain it there's nothing in our reality that you can use in order to explain something that you don't have no knowledge of. How can you explain the unexplainable? That's a problem. And so you need to study on that with all the studying that you're doing. What some of y'all call study is a bunch of what we used to call in the nation of Islam, sciencing. You would take a verse from the Bible or some of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad or whatever that, that you've learned and you would put your spin on stuff and that's sciencing and try to, that's what you call study and that's not study. If you're not studying reality, if you're not ready to accept reality, there's nothing to study. What are you studying? Deception? Magic? Hocus pocus? I wonder. But many of you accept this as reality. 
But no matter how much you believe in Batman, Batman is not real. No matter how much you believe in Spider-Man, Spider-Man is not real. Although they are based in reality. Because Spider-Man swings in New York City. There is a New York City. Jesus never existed. Yes, there is an Israel and all those things. And some of those, some of the things did historically happen, but Jesus had no part in it. It's, it's fiction. Jesus was for the ancients like Superman is for us today. Because if you didn't know any better, you would think Jesus was some kind of superhero. Hmm. Well, I only have, um, uh, what, like nine minutes, eight minutes left. Let me make the point that I would like to make on this particular topic. Many of us, we, we've seen the movie Roots. We know about Roots. We know about Kuta Kente. There was a scene in the movie Roots where when Kuta was born, Kuta's father took Kuta, the little, the little infant, the, the, the newborn baby, took Kuta Kente in his arms and out into the field out into the jungle, the land, whatever. He took that baby. Now, remember also that it seems as though Kuta Kente and his family were Muslims. So let's keep that in mind. They were Muslims. They prayed to Allah. Okay, now, you don't see this in the Muslim world. And you don't see it in the nation of Islam. What kind of Islam was Kuta Kente, his family, what were they practicing? They believed in Allah. He took the little baby and later Kuta Kente, when his, when his daughter was born, Kizzy, he did the same thing. The father took the baby and raised the baby up. To the heavens and told Allah he's speaking to Allah and he said behold one greater than yourself oh <laughs> y'all talking about studying now think about this here you are as a grown man and you are serving God in fact you are less than God the question that needs to be raised, how can you raise this newborn, this baby that just come into existence, raise it to the heavens, and you tell Allah, you tell God that this baby is greater than yourself. What is actually being said to me in my most humble opinion in my study, what I see here is that you're telling this God that in my hands I have a something that has the potential to be greater than yourself. But it's a baby. Now, how can this baby be greater than Allah, but yet when the baby grows up to be a man, the baby ends up serving Allah? It is because in each and every one of us, if you say that we are children of God, and if we come from our parents, you can raise your, somebody can raise us up in front of our parents and they can say, behold, one greater than yourself because in each and every child that we birth, although we may be great, although we may be powerful, every boy and girl that we bring into this life has the potential to be greater. So if we are the children of God, then it just makes sense 
that God knows that within each and every one of us, since we come from uh, out of that source, from that place, we have the potential to be greater than God. But somewhere, somewhere down the line, somebody has taught you that you should be God's servant, that you should be God's slave, when you should be greater than God. You should be greater than the parent. Well, we're just flesh and blood. How can we be greater than God? Because regardless if we're flesh and blood, we're still his, his or her children. And whatever power or whatever that God is, we are also. But if you don't learn to use it, if you don't recognize that you have that potential, then you end up, instead of being greater than your parents, you end up in your parents' house and your parents, when you're 50 years old, your 90-year-old mom and daddy still taking care of you. And that's where you find a religion. We're waiting for this God to take care of you and me, the believers in God. Well, not me, because I'm not waiting on God. I can be and know that I have the potential to be greater. So in religion, it talks about I'm seeking to live in God's house of many mansions or something to that effect. You don't, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't need to live in God's house at all. You have the potential to build your own house, your own mansion. You don't need to pray to God no more. You did your praying when you could not do nothing for yourself. Now when you become older, you can take care of yourself, just like when you was a baby. But as you grew older, we began to walk for ourselves and feed ourselves and go to the bathroom by ourselves and pretty soon we become adults. When will the children of Allah become an adult? When will the children of Allah become greater? And in the nation of Islam, we were taught that God is a man, so we have the potential to be greater than Wallace Farad Muhammad, who was Allah in the person. This is something that we need to think about. And remember, Kuta Kente, his family, it seems as though they were Muslims. Why can their children have the potential to, to be greater than God, yet y'all other Muslims, Muslims, your children can't do it and you yourself can't do it. Something to think about. My time has expired. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. And remember, I'm your friend. We're not enemies. We're, we are in this struggle. To liberate the mind, I hope, together. Thank you for listening. Until next time, love, peace, and soul. <laughs> I, uh, this particular subject is funny. But then also at the same time, it's very sad. And then again, it makes me very, very angry that we continue to be so, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't know what the word to use because no matter what word I choose, there are many people that would be offended. So they say, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. But maybe perhaps the word is we continue to allow ourselves to be deceived. We continue to allow ourselves to live in a fantasy world in hopes that what we are taught may, what we believe may be true. However, time is the greatest thing that tests 
whatever in life. Time is the ultimate test. And time shows us, regardless of how much you believe, what you feel, what you think you know, time lets it all hangs out and it reveals whatever it is, exactly what it is. And even though we are presented reality right in our face, many of us, we will still ignore and continue to believe in our delusions, our fantasy that we have built up in our mind. Because certainly it's got to be better. Certainly I don't believe in this and it is wrong. It is an error. It is impossible. We make mistakes every day. How come we can't make a mistake in the religions, the belief systems that we choose? And that is my subject. I just recently watched a few videos not too long ago. And the video was full of praise God. God this and the God that and God, God, God. The question that arises for me is, praise God for what? They keep telling and saying all these things about God. I have yet to see anything that what this God has done for anybody. And you may say, because of my own experience, I hate God. I cannot hate what don't exist. I cannot even dislike. It does not exist. I don't blame God. I blame ourselves for our own ignorance. For our own inability to see that this stuff is fantasy stuff. It is no more than when you saw the child that had the invisible friend and you looking at the child and the child said, this is my friend. And you look and there's no friend. The friend is invisible. And since we grow up as children with this type of mentality of invisible friends, when we become adult, it is easy to put on you and teach you that there is the greatest invisible friend way out there in the sky, somewhere out there in the universe. You will never see this invisible friend. None of you have an email, a phone number, no way to contact this invisible friend. But yet you will laugh at the child with the invisible friend. But you get angry if somebody laughs at you because of you and your invisible friend because your invisible friend is real. <laughs> Woo! You must understand that this is not mockery because I come from the same place that you come from. I was raised in the state of Mississippi. I was raised in the Baptist church. The beginnings of my life, I was influenced by Christian teaching. So I understand exactly where you coming from. I believe in Jesus. Well, what happened to you? What happened to me is that my brain began to kick in and tell me that something here was wrong. And unlike y'all, I began to listen to my brain. My brain tells me you might not understand what I'm trying to say to you. But time will, re will reveal to you and show you the reality that this belief system is not for you and it is out of time. It is inappropriate. It keeps you enslaved. It does not allow me, your brain, to do what I need to do in order to free not only you as an individual, but you belong to a people who have been physically free, but their brains are still in shackles. And their brains are still in shackles because this belief system that you have been taught, it is used and have been used all types of forms, even prior to the Caucasian people 
These belief systems have been used to make people docile, easily controlled. Because no God has come to us personally. We were taught this by a man. And since the man controlled the religion or the belief system, and you believe it, he controls you. You don't want to believe that. But clearly, the condition that we find ourselves in, we find ourselves in a slave-like condition. Always serving somebody. Always worshiping somebody. We never want to be outside of slavery. If I'm not slave to the Caucasian people, then I'm slave to a black man or I'm slave to some god or alien or I got to serve somebody. That goes to show you that you have not broken the mentality of a slave because you don't understand really what freedom is. You have no idea of truly breaking the bonds. You got to serve somebody. It is ludicrous. And it is insane. And it is a detriment to you. Here is your life. This life was given to you. But the only reason why you exist is to serve somebody. I would rather not exist. It's the same thing as like when we raise a chicken and we raise that chicken the ultimate purpose is eggs and the ultimate purpose is that life was brought into existence and we control that life so that we can have fried chicken when it's all said and done if a chicken or a cow or or any animal could think the way that we think as a human being what type of existence would that be to know that you was born just so that your life would be cut short and you would be eaten by somebody else. And basically, that's what has happened to us. As a slave, you are eaten by some other higher predator. And then we find pride in it. I, I only exist to serve God. You think that you're saying something high and mighty. That you are a slave. I'm here to serve somebody. I only exist to serve somebody. You think that you really saying some big time stuff. Like you doing something big. Praise this God. Now. Unlike the racist Caucasian people. If somebody came here. During slavery. And was going to bring harm to his slaves. The racist Caucasian people. Would take up arms. And protect their property. Because their property is this slave. Now, you want to worship God, and when you say servant, you basically are saying I'm, you are a slave. Because that's why you exist, to serve this God. However, you have been attacked by all kinds of forces for thousands of years, praying to God. And God has done nothing to protect you from your enemies, those who come to cause you harm. I was watching also roots and of course Kute Kente was uh, trapped by the slave catchers and he kept talking about Allah this, Allah that Allah knows and guess what, Allah didn't do nothing for Kute Kente to the day Kute Kente now his name is Toby to the day that he died, praise God I'm asking you again, praise God for what, y'all been praising God for thousands of years. And all these oppressed people. Been praising God for thousands of years. And this God never did nothing to help you. If you did not help yourself. Then your condition would not change. It says in the scriptures. That God helped those who helped themselves. If I can help myself. What I need you for. We don't think about the things that we have been taught. When I take one step, God takes two steps. Well, I've taken one step. I've taken two steps. Four, five, six, many over my lifetime, I've taken many steps. I have yet to see any God do anything, nor have you. You can pretend all you want. There is no debate about God. 
whether God exists or not. Because clearly, any sane person can see that this God does not exist. And what a coward, what a coward your God is. Thank you for tuning in to the show. Today is 